We're going to show the failure points of the valves in Bosch aftermarket injectors, and we'll look at how to bleed them and how to reassemble the injector in detail. We'll see how the values are checked on the 115, 116, and 117 injectors now when we disassemble a standard injector. One of the things we need to pay attention to when disassembling these injectors is that they have a special closing system, the nut on the threaded nut. We've removed it, we've taken the barrel. Yes, here this injector appears to be disassembled, but right in this part, there is a brown closing gasket. This should absolutely not be removed. When installing the injector nozzle nut, this prevents the injector from leaking. Many people try to achieve closing here by wrapping Teflon tape. However, it is strongly recommended not to remove the liquid gasket here. Let's say it was removed. Special there are special liquid gaskets. Here, tightening them helps during the assembly of the injector. Now here, before we move on to the internal market mechanism, we'll touch on the valve. The spacer plates in the valves are just as important as the valve itself. These spacer plates are responsible for closing the pin point. This pin, the valve, the piezo valve, is a bi-directional valve. It both seals the face of the pen, we removed it. Also seals the small millimeter-sized surface at the front of the pin when it opens blocking the return port here. When it opens in the opposite direction, the back of the side, the back surface, a one millimeter surface, a thin, angled surface slides into the valve. When we turn the pen to the other back side, we remove the spring. We're taking out the spring part. Yes, as you can see here, just like the back part of the pen, presses against the back surface of this plate, which is the closing point. So, when the valve closes during operation, it also blocks the back hole. It seals both directions, the side as well. When pressed in the opposite direction, it seals the valve's housing. Usually, people don't pay attention to these spacer plates. The spacer plates right at the closing point on the surface where the valve presses. In injectors that operate frequently, indentations occur at the closing point, and because of the resulting deformation and the increase in trigger stroke lengths, variations in fuel flow rates can occur. To fix these, either the spacer part needs to be replaced or these need to be lapped on a diamond plate, which we'll show in a moment. The lapping must be done without disturbing the parallelism on the plate. Now, first we'll talk about the wear points on the valve, typically on valves. The inner seat where the valve presses and the surface where the pin makes contact, the seat area wears out. Now, we have two types of valve models. The ones we refer to as the 115 series, and the ones we refer to as the 116 and 117 series valves. What's the difference between these valves? We'll talk about that. In the 115 series, the gap between the surface and the face of the pin is between 38 and 40 microns. That's the trigger stroke length, the distance, the opening and closing stroke length. This also affects the fuel flow rate. In the 116 and 117 series, these are around 27 or 28 microns. It opens for a shorter time, and because it opens for a shorter time, the amount of fuel returning is less. It injects more fuel. That's why the trigger stroke lengths in the 116 and 117 series are different. Now, looking at the wear surfaces on the pins will also touch on that. Here, we have a worn piezo valve under a microscope. We'll look at its details. On the screen through the microscope now. Here, we're looking at an old piezo. We see the old valve. The wear on the valve seat, how it is all together. First, we'll focus on the pin. We're zooming in on the pin, focusing on the damaged areas. We'll take a look. Now we're zooming in even more. Yes, right here on the edge where we're looking. If you pay attention, there are metal. In these areas, there's metal buildup. So this. Entire area is the surface where the valve presses down. It's worn out, but in these spots, there are metal deposits caused by the wear. This also causes the valve to not close completely, which causes the fuel amounts to be low. 
Now, here we see the end part of the pin. We pulled it back the same way. We've reached the socket area. We're focusing on the socket. Yes, we can see the wear inside the socket now. We've zoomed in closely. We know. There are adhesions on the surfaces. And now we're opening the new. We open our Pierzo valve. This phase 116 and 117 series are used for both injectors since they have the same triggers. We're opening the valve. We're holding it with the clamp. The surfaces are very sensitive. It has a surface like sensitive. Now this, under the microscope, will examine the fine details of the pen and the seat grinding. Right now, the surface of the new valve. The piezo valve, we're seeing the surface quality. Pins. First, we'll focus on the pin. We'll focus on the pin's closing point. The exact closing point of the pin is right at this edge contour, the sharp edge. Here, between the valve seat and the point where the pin presses, there is a certain angle. It applies point pressure. The valve applies point pressure here and... During the opening and closing of the valve to allow fuel through, it causes dynamic operation. The surface quality of this area is ground with very high precision. Similarly, when we move on to the seat area, let's focus on the seat. When we focus on the seat, the grinding precision in the seat is also carried out with very high accuracy. So here, the valve's pressure point is right at this edge, not exactly at the edge of the hole. But it presses slightly from the outer contours. And at the closing points, as I mentioned, the grinding angles are point-specific. So they match each other perfectly. Yes, that's how the surface quality is as well. The visuals, yes, what we're seeing here right now, are shown at 100x magnification. The plate we see on the screen right now is the spacer plate that the piezo valve rests on. Now, on the spacer plate, the valve's pin, meaning the piezo pin of this valve, has a flat surface of about one millimeter at the back end. When it closes in the opposite direction, in other words, when the valve opens, it opens this fuel inlet hole here. It closes it. Over time, let's focus here. Yes! The areas where the pin presses on this whole section are already visible here. The pin pressed on this part, right? Now, this is an injector that hasn't been used much. Normally, in valves that have been operating for a long time. A dent forms here. The pin keeps hitting and hitting, wearing down the surface. And as I just explained, trigger stroke lengths were around 116, 117, reduced the piezo. Trigger stroke 28 to 30 microns. These areas 0.01 millimeters, 0.015 wear in these areas, and a half percent wear occurs. The 30 micron stroke increases to 40 or 50 microns. Micron trigger strokes, the fuel flow rates decrease. Longer trigger strokes, the return amount also increases. At the same time, it reduces the amount of fuel. Now, when testing this on Bosch's test machine, it doesn't pass the ISA test, the one we call the ISA guys test, nor does it pass the test guys standards. Why doesn't it pass? It's because the surface of the valve here, the surface point where the valve presses, where the pin presses, could be worn out. So what are we going to do about it? Either we'll replace it with a new plate, or if we can't replace it, we'll lap this plate using a fine 1200 grit diamond plate. We need to lap the surface very precisely so that the closing point where the pen presses gets corrected and the trigger stroke lengths come into balance. If, as we said, you install the valve on a worn out surface, there will be a slight drop in the fuel amount. It won't pass the ISA man's test. Now, we're also showing how to lap this on the lapping plate. The inter, the inter plate we just looked at under the microscope, this is it. As we said, there's not much damage on this one, but after examining the damaged plates under the microscope, here we. We have a 1200 grit plate, a diamond plate. This definitely can't be lapped with a coarser grit. It won't work with 1000 grit or anything like that. We placed it on the 1200 grit. We placed it on this one. We'll lap it here by drawing figure eights in the same way, then rotate it again. We'll draw figure eights three times, then rotate it a quarter turn once. Three figure eights, then we rotate it a quarter turn. 
If we don't do it this way, we'll ruin the surface parallelism of the plate. We check this properly under a microscope. There, approximately 5 to 10 microns of wear occurs at most. When you lap this and when you install it, you won't have any issues during the ISO inspector's test. We're talking about worn valve spacer plates. After lapping the surface, we bring it back. These also need to be thoroughly cleaned. First, we need to remove the air from it. To remove the air here, we block the rear return line. We fill this up with diesel to the brim. In fact, this also needs to be positioned properly. It has to stand upright, filled with diesel. At the same time, since air gets trapped inside the piezo mechanism, we remove this mechanism as well. We pull it out from here, then inside a sealed diesel. We reinstall this pin without allowing any air to get in. When we compress it, a certain amount of pressure will build up. While compressing, when there's diesel inside the diesel chamber, and it's under pressure, there are tensioning tools for this. Or we use an adjustable plier like this to compress the pin, the mechanism. When we compress it, when it stays like this for about a minute, the mechanism automatically releases the air inside and returns to its normal state. So after it returns to its normal state and the air has been released, we install the mechanism without reversing the system. Then we immediately place the piezo valve. It must be in a vertical position. We can't lay it on its side. We install the spacer plate. After that, first, we carefully bring the nozzle over to the designated area and proceed to install it securely. Yes, we make sure to attach the nozzle nut firmly in place to ensure a tight fit. Then, we move on to the next step, ensuring everything is aligned correctly and functioning as expected. Normally, once it's in place, we tighten it with a standard torque and the process is complete. We can move on to testing the injector on the machine. Yes, there are also some things to explain about the piezo. That's it. We've explained the important elements to pay attention to, the key points and details regarding the installation of the valve.